All right, everyone, this is kind of the first step in kind of a three-parter. Ultimately, we're going to end with the price of goods and services that we purchase, whether it be, you know, sandwich, a burger, going to the doctor to get ourselves fixed. Each of those things comes with a price. You know, how much we're going to pay for that, $19.99, $5,000, whatever. A lot of people, they think of price as something that's kind of arbitrary. It's not really arbitrary. But it's kind of a result of kind of this, this equation. An equation is pretty much supply and demand. Now, what we're going to look at for now is just the demand. Later, we'll look at supply. And then this will end with putting demand and supply together to figure out price. Okay, so this is kind of keep that in mind. So this is really just one third of a larger conversation today. So there's two kind of basic definitions to really be aware of. Demand, the quantity of a good or service that buyers are willing and able to buy at all possible prices during a period of time. There's that, that is demand. With that comes the law of demand. As the price of a good or service rises, the quantity of that good or service that people are willing and able to buy during a certain period of time will fall. So the idea is this, the more expensive something is, the less people are willing to buy of that good or service or vice versa. So how do we graph this um, or how do we show this? We do it with a graph and we call this a demand curve. Um, and pretty much this is what it shows. You have this kind of example, you have sweaters, it's got a price point, number of sweaters people are willing to uh, buy. $27, almost 4,000 sweaters can be sold. $30, 1,000 sweaters are sold. If you can do either do it as a table or you can do it as a chart. Um, usually they do it as a, as the graph because um, when we add supply to this, it's much easier to kind of see how those two can interact with each other. Law of demand is this, and this is as a, Again, of all things being equal, nothing else really else plays a factor, but is this price go up, quantity demanded goes down, quantity demanded is really just the amount of that product people are going to buy. So price go up, the quantity that people will demand will go down, price go down, the quantity that people are going to demand will go up. It's always, always, always a reverse relationship or inverse relationship. One go up, the other must go down. That's what that means. So here's kind of uh, something to kind of remember too. Um, pretty much everything we've been talking about so far has been what's on the right. I'm sorry, what's on the left. The, um, the change in quantity demanded, all of this has to do with price. If it involves anything with price, this is how we show it. It'll just be a move along the line. Now, if there's something that comes along and changes the demand, something other than price for that good or service, that will cause the graph to shift either to the right or shift to the left. This is a lot like the PPC or the PPF, the production possibilities curve or the production possibilities frontier, whichever way you call it, same basic principle. If it's just a change along the price, it'll be what's on the right. I'm sorry, it'll be what's on the left. The, just move along the line. If it's a, anything else, it'll be along the right side of the screen. It's where the line itself will actually move. So when it's just a movement along the line, the line itself isn't moving, just the point on the line is moving. This is kind of one of those things that causes it. If a price goes up, Consumers will simply just move on to another thing. 
if it's something that they have to have. That is one thing. It's called the substitution effect. The other thing is called the income effect. And this is usually when you can't substitute it, people will just do without. So like, for example, um, like for the for this Big Mac, you know, the rise in a price in a Big Mac will cause an impact to a person's income. They just won't be able to afford it. Better example is kind of why, you know, why we all don't drive Maseratis. Maseratis are very, very expensive. We can't afford them. So, at least in general, if you're that rich and you can afford it, hook me up. But, um, but this is kind of that idea. That's the income effect. The, peop, the person, the individual, the household, they themselves cannot afford that good or service. Now, things that can cause the demand line to shift, the things that actually cause it to move back and forth is... Uh, kind of what we'll look at now. Now, what can cause a shift in the man curve is more income. To normal good, this is kind of where they will say, um, like, you'll just buy more. You know, instead of buying the small coffee for the sake of our example, uh, you'll buy more coffee. Instead of the small, you'll buy the large. And, you know, that is a possibility. Or again, like if, like for gasoline or something. You have a little extra money, you can you know buy more gasoline for more road trips or stuff like that. Change in preferences. Something can become very, very popular overnight. And again, about 20 years ago, there was a Tickle Me Elmo craze where a dumb doll of Elmo that would giggle if you tickled it People were dropping about a thousand dollars for that doll, and what that was was it was a popular gift that Christmas that shifted the line to the right. Expectations: People will buy things if it's on sale. They see the word sale. There are people that will buy things just because it says sale. That's why Kohl's always has things on sale. So that way you go up there, you go, ooh, it's a sale, you buy it. Because people like that word. The price of related goods, like substitutes, that can shift it. So, like, for example, if, you know, Starbucks decided to raise their price of coffee to 20 bucks or something. that They're not already there already. But um, let's say Starbucks decided to raise their prices to something insane other coffee companies would they would see an increase in their demand because people won't pay for Starbucks stuff but they'll go to Dunkin Donuts or Kalachi factory or even McDonald's and buy their coffee there and then you have the compliments so price of related goods these are things that you will buy with the other thing so like for example price of donuts goes down people will naturally buy coffee or they'll buy you know they'll, a lot of people they'll buy coffee with their donuts so if there's a one donut spot where it's like hey we're doing a sale all donuts 50 percent off people will naturally go there for the donuts and while they're there buying the donuts they'll get some to drink as well this is actually one of the reasons why like at a burger place like mcdonald's or whataburger or something Burgers and fries. How many people go there just for the burgers? They may go there for the burger, but they'll buy the fries there too. They'll get a drink there too. So if Whataburger was to slash the price of their burgers, they will see a similar thing with their demand for French fries because everybody's going to be going to Whataburger for the burgers. And while they're there, they'll be like, yeah, I'll get some fries too. Now, what can cause the shift inward is kind of this: more income. Let's say you're, you know, you're buying the cheap, you know, you're buying Dr. Thunder, you know, because it's cheaper than Dr. Pepper. You get more money, and then people are like, "Well, I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to buy the good stuff now. I'm going to buy the name brand stuff, so that Dr. Thunder." Their demand will may go down, 
because people got more money. So now they can blow it on name brand goods and services or like the, uh, you know, the ser like in the cereal aisle, you have the big, you know, budget cereal bags where it's you know pretty much the same thing as, you know, the name brand stuff. It just has, you know, instead of Fruit Loops, it's Fruit O's or something like that. But when people start getting money, you know, they'll, they'll ditch the uh, Fruit O's and start buying the Fruit Loops. So that, so Fruit O's demand, their shit, their curve goes inward. Other shifts in demand, reduced income. People lose their money. They lose their job. They lose their money. They're not able to purchase anything. So yeah, their demand curve will collapse. And this is actually one of the reasons why we got the Trump bucks. Like, you know, we have the COVID stuff. People are like, oh, I'm going to hang on to my money a little bit. So the government cuts checks. The Federal Reserve reduces interest rates. Why? Because in the economy, people have reduced income, which means their demand curve is shifting inward. Change in preferences. Something that is popular now will not be popular tomorrow. So, so yeah. Tickle Me Elmo, not really that popular anymore. The demand for that shifted inward. Then those are the pet rocks. You know, people would literally get rocks, spray paint them, put Google eyes on them, sell them. Or even Beanie Babies. Those beanbag animals. People were, you know, 30, 40, 50, 100, 200 dollars for a beanbag animal. People were investing that for their like life savings and well, now that the main demand curve shifted inward, people ain't paying for it because nobody really cares anymore. And then expectations, a sales can do this. If people know that a sale is coming in the future, because again, we're looking at just the here and the now. If somebody knows that a sale is going to happen tomorrow, like if I was to say that, you know, Nike is going to have a sale, all shoes, 99% off, would you be buying Nike shoes right now? No, probably not. You'll wait till next week. So what that means is right now, your demand line for Nike shoes is going to shift inward. Now, once the sale comes, you know, next week happens, the 99% off sale happens, then your demand will shoot outwards. But just for the here and the now, it's going to shift inwards. And then substitutes, the price of substitutes go down. You know, let's say you're, you know, Starbucks does the 99% sale. And you're, so that would be the substitute of Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Starbucks, they lower their price big time. Your demand for Dunkin' Donuts coffee is going to shift inwards because you're going to go to you're going to go to Starbucks. And then your compliments, you know, Whataburger, they jack up their prices on cheeseburgers. Your demand for Whataburger French fries is that going to go outwards or is that going to go inwards? Is it going to increase or is it going to decrease? And then if there's any goods that you would buy the same, no matter the cost, uh, we would call that a neutral good. This is kind of more of a theoretical idea. Probably the closest thing you would probably ever get to that would be toilet paper or toothpaste. You know, those most basic, basic things. But again, if toilet paper got too crazy, would you risk still buy? Eventually, yes, you would reach a point where you wouldn't buy it. So this, this is probably more, again, more of a theoretical idea but it's uh, still something to kind of think about. And again, remember, this is just half of that equation. The whole thing about demand plays into price, but this is looking at things from the uh, perspective of the consumer. What are we as consumers willing to purchase? How much are we willing to pay? At what price are we willing to purchase and pay and all the, and all that good stuff? And yeah. That's actually pretty much it for this. Uh, next time, we'll look at kind of the supply side of things, which is looking at things from the perspective of the provider, the business, the person that provides the good or service.
and that one will require a little bit of a mind shift for some people because naturally we lean towards being demanders you know we all go to the store we all purchase things and this is something that we're kind of used to by default the other side the supply side looking at things from the business person and i'll just leave that i'll just leave it there for now and i'll see you next time peace out